to myself, probably not gonna do a video for this one based off of what I've heard, since I do try to keep it mostly about film celebration on this channel. I have a new movie coming out. It's called Madam Web. It is in the Marvel Universe, and it also stars Sydney Sweeney. In the Marvel Universe, in the Marvel Universe. Can you name the three Spider-Man uh, Tom Holland movies? Spider-Man. Here's, here he comes. Here he comes, yes. That's yeah. number one. Yep. Spider-Man, and he's back. And so, while my character in the movie may be able to see the future, I also can. And I know what the future brings. I know that when you see Madam Web, you're gonna love it. In fact, I think you're gonna see it twice. With Madam Web now finally officially released, the reviews are in and aren't as bad as initially predicted with talks of creators trying to recreate Spider-Man No Way Home or even Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah, this is hilarious because Dakota Johnson definitely thought she was signing up for this. Imagine truly how awkward you have to feel to publicly admit that you haven't even seen your own movie, publicly admitting that you can't, or I guess won't, contribute financially to your own shit stain of a movie. And don't get me wrong, she's not in the minority. But this is a huge L for Sony. Like damn, from a studio point of view, how did you not expect this to happen? How would you not expect this reaction? I mean, this box office is raking in less than your local Chick-fil-A on a casual weekend. And what's crazy and what I'm about to say is not something that I want to become the norm or anything like that, because if it does, that just entails that we as an audience are truly in the sunken place when it comes to our Hollywood entertainment. But even Warner Brothers saw the writing on the wall when it came to their self-deemed shitty product and banished that trash to the Shadow Realm. And the worst part is, is that I think Batwoman would have definitely been better than Madam Web. But at this point, I'm just comparing rotten eggs to spoiled milk. As for the rest of the crew, excluding Dakota Johnson, well shit, they were just happy to be there. I'm sure for the lot of you, you either know, have heard, or unfortunately, have seen the disaster that is Madam Web. To a point where it wasn't even comical anymore, it was just sad. And a true waste of your money, time, brain cells, and self-respect. A film that you could say was hindered by a myriad of problems stemming from studio interference, incredibly cringy dialogue and ad-libs due to the second grade level writing, Toontown level acting that I'm sure was done in one take, some more than others, editing choices that make the Fast and Furious franchise look like Oscar winners, and again, which I don't understand why this is becoming the norm in Hollywood, blatant and distasteful mismarketing to the audience and of the actors involved. But in reality, Madam Web was a movie that was never really ready to leave the nest in the first place. And while yes, I had many thoughts and many questions, while at the same time feeling a sense of emptiness inside after leaving the theater another $20 short wondering, hmm, could I have just bought some popcorn and watched YouTube in the lobby for a more engaging and entertaining time than I just had? My biggest question that I did leave the theater with and a question that I would ask the studio, but a question that I have to ask you, the viewer, before we dissect and slander this movie to oblivion. Who is Madam Web even made for? A question that was ringing in my head and in our conversations after the movie made me realize there are no winners here. There was no demand for Madam Web. There's honestly no demand for a completely separate Sony Spider-Verse besides I guess for the completion of the Miles Morales trilogy, but does that even count? So who? wins. Is it the audience? Obviously not. Is it the people involved? The writers? The directors? Again, obviously not. Is it the studio? Does Sony just magically expect the audience that they're catering to to bend over backwards for a relatively niche character from an industry who in the past half decade has had a pretty solid track record of shoving shit down your throat and expecting a five-star review? Again, I don't think so. So who the hell is winning here? <sighs> the answer is obviously there are no winners, or I should specify that there are no winners from a positive outlook post-release. And while that's just me trying to jump into the mindset of some of these studio executives in order to try to understand the tomfoolery that they greenlit in order to make it to the big screen, 
because I didn't want to come out on this video and just rant and ramble and basically make the same YouTube video as everybody else. But the movie really leaves the audience with no choice. And what truly makes it so much worse is that Sony obviously is a studio that doesn't care about the properties that they own. While the jury is still out on Sony's latest multi-time delayed movie Craven the Hunter, movies like Venom Let There Be Carnage, Morbius, and now Madam Web, it has now become relatively obvious that these were first ideas and then movies strictly for the reason of retaining the rights to an entity that they don't even care about. It is the ultimate form of narcissism and selfishness, basically equivalent to not ending your relationship with your significant other, knowing you're not good for each other, knowing that there will never be any improvements, any signs of effort or cooperation, just a give and take relationship with the inability to let go because of the eventual inevitability of the grass being greener on the other side of the fence for your significant other. And that is exactly what it's like and exactly the type of relationship that Sony asked from its multi-million people polyamorous relationship. It's filthy work and obviously an unsuccessful way to create an audience to studio relationship like say Studio A24 has with its core audience and an easy way to go broke as f But that was a good rant and honestly, I feel better. Let's talk about this slop. All right, we're gonna keep this simple, short, and to the point. And when I mean simple, I mean I'm not gonna give this movie any more than what it gave me because from here on out, it's just Madam Web talk. The movie follows Dakota Johnson's Cassandra Webb, a random lady with an important mom who after a near-death experience, or I guess an actual death experience, gains the ability to see into the future and change the fate of the people involved. But who are the people involved? Well, Let's meet our characters, shall we? We have Sydney Sweeney. She's timid and her dad hates her. Daddy issues. Huh. We haven't seen that before, have we? Anya, our Latina girl. Her parents are no longer around because of race-related issues. How original. And Maddie, our black girl. She's a real charmer. She's loud, outspoken, and doesn't play by the rules. Again, seems a little racially motivated, but our real Razzie of the night goes to the performance and the character of Barefoot Spider-Man. What an absolute clown. I truly couldn't even believe my eyes. Like who the hell on this rock in space is walking around barefoot in the streets of Jersey? But what's even funnier, cause what's the point of his suit covering up his feet while he's terrorizing local diners and teenagers? Why be barefoot as a regular ass dude on the street, but not in the suit? And they try to pass this dude off as like, some Chad, as if he doesn't just look like some bloke from the streets of San Francisco. Like, what are we even doing here? But wait, we'll get into all of that. To wrap up the plot, after Barefoot Spider-Man betrays Cassandra's mom and takes spider powers for himself, he's haunted by the vision of his eventual death at the hands of three Spider-Women, with French Spider-Man not being able to master his powers in the last 30 plus years of having them, the only solution Roadway Accident Spider-Man sees to change his fate is to dispatch the teenage girls before they come to realize and fulfill their own destinies. <laughs> Will Cassandra Webb be able to master her own powers, fight her past demons in order to bring the family of Spider-Girls, eventually Spider-Women together, and more importantly, foil the plot of the webless Spider-Man from not dying? Man, even reading this script, this movie fucking sucks. Anyway. Okay, my first issue, because I know it's not even a main issue in the majority of other people's YouTube videos, it's just mostly hating on women and honestly the other shitty aspects of this movie too, so actually let me take that back. But I am not exaggerating when I say this is truly not only the worst villain ever put to screen in cinema history, but undeniably the worst character to ever grace a camera. I have seen better performances from my family's middle school talent shows. It is Hayden Christensen from Attack on Titans level acting and direction. I truly couldn't believe my eyes. I would not have been shocked if TMZ released something along the lines that this was just some dude that had a one night stand with one of the behind the scenes staff and she was just like, 
hey, want to be in a movie? And this guy has been in a multitude of movies. And maybe it's just me personally, but I truly thought this actor was just from the streets. And we paid some guy with like the $100 we have left after realizing we were going to have to reshoot basically the entirety of this movie. Man, this movie is just truly incredible. And honestly, this is where the questions truly begin. Why is he walking around barefoot like a bloke from San Francisco and not as French Spider-Man? Why did he kill Cassandra Webb's mom? Why does he even want these powers to begin with? Let alone, what does he do with these powers after the fact of murdering someone? How did he even get away with murder? Why hasn't he mastered his spider powers in the past 30 plus years of having them? What even are his Spider-Man powers specifically? Why do the spider girls, eventually spider women, even want to kill him? What are the spider girls' motivations for doing so? Are the futures that he sees in his visions inevitable without the force of taking someone's life? Does he even have anything that he wants to protect? Family? Maybe a company? Company image or company assets that he's trying to protect? No? It's literally nothing? He just doesn't want to die? Whoa, crazy. Like, duh, you bloke. No one wants to die. It's just so bad. Like, this is Toontown shit, man. I can't believe this got greenlit by multiple eyes. It's unbelievable, really. And while I could reiterate the same talking points that I'm sure you have heard five, six times by now about the sloppy and incoherent editing choices, dialogue sequences that leave you wondering and honestly missing the next part of the next scene because you're still thinking to yourself, huh, did I hear that right? Character writing that is an insult to the term character writing as a whole, sideways looking promotional and marketing choices, and action sequences so baffling and ridiculously stupid that it leaves you gaping at the mouth due to the slowly inching stroke and disease this movie curses upon its patrons brave enough to test the reclining chairs of another Sony flop. Again, I just leave you with the question of who was Madam Web even made for? For what it's worth, even though it might not seem like it due to some of her comments post-release, and I don't want to say that she tried because I don't know if she tried and I don't even know if she knew that this movie needed saving and in reality, Again, I think she thought that she was just signing up for a project completely different from what we got. But Dakota Johnson was truly the only saving grace of this movie. It's one of those situations where it was relatively obvious that she was the only person on set from her co-stars, director, writers, camera crew, editing team, costume designers, and even the makeup team that had a semblance of knowing what the fuck was even going on. Sydney Sweeney was in costume for like 30 seconds. What are we doing, mates? We had a golden opportunity here. The million dollar idea was literally smacking us in the face. It's all over my Twitter every day. <sighs> At the end of the day, Madam Web just felt like another CW level movie from a studio that obviously doesn't give a shit about its properties, assets, or the audience. Trying to manifest and create a demand that was never really there to begin with in a movie that unfortunately, but honestly, is just another example in an ever-growing sample size of female-led comic book TV shows or movies that simply don't hit it home financially. And while everybody personally can contribute that to whatever reasons you so choose, the fact of the matter is, is that Madam Web has now been added to the bulletin board of unsuccessful female-led superhero projects like Black Widow, Echo, She-Hulk, Secret Invasion, and most recently with the Marvels on the big screen. Movies like Madam Web that have no plan, no vision, and no integrity contribute to the reasons why Hollywood is in such a failed state, and a reason why the audience to Hollywood relationship feels as if it's at an all-time low. A release like this doesn't help anybody. But luckily for us, it seems as if everybody's ready to ban it to the Shadow Realm anyway. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I should say follow me on Twitter. I started a whole new account for this channel, so I'm just going to start promoting that more. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.